All right, so I forgot we were being tested on heart failure. So this is heart failure in five minutes or less and don't mind me breaking out. So what is heart failure? Pretty much what it is, is it's an impairment of the ventricular filling or the ejection of blood. So just that impair of blood flow in the heart. And so what does that do to? The first thing it's due to is impaired function. Um, so that Frank Starling, that is the stretching. Um, and then it's also due to myocardial hypertrophy, which is just an enlargement of that myocardial wall. So there's an impairment in their function, the function and like the um, design, I guess you would say. And then there's an increased workload and a non-cardiac contraction. So there's a difference in right versus left. If it's a right-sided heart failure, that means the right side is going to have um, that impaired ventricular contraction. So it's just the right side. And then if you remember, right side it goes to the peripherals. So there's um, a block, uh, block of blood flow to the peripherals. Whereas with left side, I always think left lungs, both start with L. Um, so there, it's going to be the left side that's going to have that um, abnormal ventricular contraction and then there's going to be a block of blood flow to the lungs, left lungs. So how are you going to diagnose? Um, you are going to do um, a B-type natriuretic peptide. The number should be less than 100. Um, that's one of the biggest tests they do, I guess, with heart failure. Um, and then you can do a CBC, electrolytes, uh, bun creatinine, blood glucose, liver function tests, um, your analysis, ECG, echo, and x-ray. Um, x-ray, you can just look if the heart shows that it's enlarged. Um, you want to, when a patient comes in, you can listen to their lung sounds. If they're having wheezing, that's pretty typical with people with um, heart failure because they have that fluid. Um, accumulation so you will hear fluid in there um, you could hear an s3 and s4 which is that atypical um, those heart noises heart murmurs um, so you do the apical pulse check and what are the risks for heart failure um, I just wrote two but there's more I think the biggest ones are coronary artery disease and hypertension um, but also you know obesity a sedentary lifestyle all that jazz also puts you at risk and so um, this was bolded in Fern's PowerPoint notes. She put it many times that in order to treat heart failure, you want to treat the causes first. So if it's hypertension or CAD, you want to treat those things first because heart failure in itself is its own like thing that you need to treat, but you want to treat the underlying causes first. So I thought that was important. So symptoms, remember how I said left lungs? So when you see left-sided heart failure, you're gonna see all those lung issues. So you're gonna have pulmonary edema, difficulty breathing, fatigue, they're gonna be weak, they're gonna be wheezing, bronchospasms, and then the right side, which is the peripherals, remember? Um, so they're gonna have edema, ascites, which is that fluid accumulation in the stomach, um, decreased appetite, and enlarged organs. And then late stage, they could have chain stokes breathing, sleep apnea, blood clots, and decreased mental function and um, depression. And so then finally some treatments that you can use um, for heart failure because there's that fluid accumulation. You can use diuretics um, and you know, some diuretics are loop, thiazide, potassium sparing, carbonic anhydrase, and osmotic and vasodilators, the ACE, um, Pril, ARBs, uh, Sardin, and uh, calcium channel blockers, pine, nitrates, nitroglycerin, non-pharmacological like methods, DASH diet, you want to limit patient sodium intake and exercise, and some nursing diagnosis that could be with this is activity intolerance, decreased cardiac output, constipation, fatigue, excess fluid volume, impaired gas exchange. Um, and just remember, left lungs, lungs, you're gonna get all those uh, pulmonary symptoms. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks guys, good luck.